Hi everyone, welcome back to Inside Indiana Overtime. Alex McCarthy and Jordan Gusky with you. Um, throwing up the deuce, as always. I love it. Uh, we're here at Assembly Hall where Indiana just um, annihilated Moorhead State, 92-59. Uh, to 59. Um, It was a game that I, I think a lot of people thought was going to be a little bit closer because Moorhead State played really well and beat St. Louis the other day, and um, they, their defense is, is been pretty solid all season, but outside the first like seven minutes, six and a half minutes or so of the game, Indiana dominated this. I mean, I, Moorhead State scored to take a lead at the 13-33 mark, I think, and then Indiana went on an 18 to nothing run, and from then on, it was just, it was all Indiana. Yeah, they, they had no trouble getting to the paint. Thomas Bryant and Max Bielfeld really had their way down there, Mass mm -hmm. especially leading the team in the first half with 10 points. I'm surprised we didn't see a lot of him in the second half since he was playing yeah. so well, and then we saw a lot more Bryant. But, you know, I just, you, you don't need to use him if you can rest him. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and both of those guys played really well. They both played very efficiently. Um, you know, together they were 9 for 9 from the floor. Um, Bryant made 6 of his 7 free throws. Bielfeld made 2 of his 3 free throws. So they, you know, were pretty disciplined with the ball. They weren't making a lot of dumb decisions, which, I mean, you, you don't really expect Max Bielfeld to make kind of dumb, you know, freshman-y mistakes. But you do expect that from time to time from Thomas Bryant. But Bryant looks really good, um, as he has against all of the... Um, mid-major. Yeah, the mid-major non-conference kind of teams that Indiana has its way with. So, you know, this, it's still an Indiana team that's trying to prove itself against maybe a little bit better competition. But I think tonight was definitely... You know, there's definitely signs for optimism here, especially on the defensive end, right. where Indiana played so much more aggressively, so much more effectively. Um, Moorhead State really hurt itself, but they were also, um, Indiana was also playing with so much more pressure on the ball. Moorhead State turned the ball over t 23 times, um, which was, and just an insane amount in the first half. Right. It was it was incredible. They dug a huge hole. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess with this defense, it was primarily man-to-man -to -man tonight, and... Uh, James Blackman, I thought, played really, really, he played better. He at least played with a lot more heart on the defensive end, and I think a lot more pride on the defensive end. There was a time when, um, you know, he tipped a ball into the backcourt, went chasing after it, uh, and after the Morehead State player picked it back up, Blackman was still kind of stabbing around and, and trying to knock the ball out. And he got a foul called on him and, and looked visibly annoyed instead of his usual kind of blasé look on the defensive end. Uh, was that kind of the big takeaway for you tonight, was the the way Indiana played defensively? Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at it on, on a Friday night, and I just, <laughs> you're, you're wondering, looking at more, I'd say the team that's supposed to be really fast, really mm -hmm. big on the boards, that this would be a really big challenge for Indiana, and they showed after the first really couple minutes, after Morehead State took that 6-1 to lead to start it off real quick, they, they clamped down. That's how, mm -hmm. they, that's how they got that 18-0 run, and that's what you needed to see, just because Morehead State isn't like a Michigan State or a Purdue if you don't see it against these teams, it's going to be really hard to do that same thing against a top-level program. And I think if, if they had played this kind of defense in Maui, they would have they would have won those games. So this is this is really important that they are able to at least do it now. Yeah, yeah, and I think it was important that they kind of proved to themselves that they could play that hard for that long. I mean, right. there were times in the second half where you know Indiana got up by, by like 41, and then you know, gave up like a 13-2 to two run or something like that to Moorhead State where it was like, okay, this happens when you're up by 40 at home and it's not buzzing, you know, the, the atmosphere isn't electric, you know, like it is in a close Big Ten game or something like that. So the, there are kind of lulls that you expect. Obviously, it's not really what Indiana wants, but, um, you know, that'll happen. But I think by and large, this is an encouraging effort for Indiana. Five guys in double figures. Um, front court played a lot better. Um, Yogi Ferrell had a good game. He had five assists, I think. No, seven assists oh. tonight, uh, which was pretty impressive there. Um, and Indiana was able to cut down the turnovers a little bit. They got bad for a while in the second half. Um, so, once again, it's an effort where Indiana has more turnovers than it does assists, but um, still a little bit better than it was, at least in Maui. So, you know, um, a few takeaways, a few decent takeaways tonight. Uh, Max Bielfeld started the game on the bench. Uh, it was... Farrell, Blackman, Johnson, uh, Williams, and Bryant to start the game. Uh, Hartman was the first off the bench. Bielfeld came off. So um, that's a lineup that I think played pretty well together. Yeah, that's the right lineup. 
Um, it's good to have Robert Johnson out on the floor, I think, for defensive purposes for Indiana. So, um, I don't know, that's, that's about it from tonight, unless you can think of anything else. I, I mean, they shot well from the free throw line. At least they got they did. Line. They did. They got there 36 times, which is twice as much uh, as they averaged per game in terms of free throw attempts. So, that's definitely encouraging. Um, but, again, part of that's kind of from more at State not being very disciplined on offense right. and, or on defense and, and following them a bunch. So we'll see um, how it translates next week. Um, they're going to play a couple more kind of lower-level non-conference teams, and they're going to go up to Indy to play Notre Dame in the Crossroads Classic. So I guess we'll start to learn a little bit more about this team moving forward. But until then, we're going to sign off, and we're going to leave you to, to your weekend. Hopefully enjoy the rest of it. We're going to find out in, you know, 15, 18 hours where Indiana's football team is going to go for a bowl game, so that's exciting. So That's probably the next time you'll hear from us, but until then, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.